on the Dexter here, the hydraulics can be operated in one of two different modes. With the selector lever pushed down, the hydraulics operate in draft control or quality control, as uh, Fordson used to call it. And in draft control, uh, it uh, maintains the, a set pull behind the back of the tractor. With the lever up, the hydraulics operate in position control and in position control the hydraulics maintain the implement at the set height. However, it's not quite as straightforward as that. Position control is used when you're hitching onto an implement because in position control you've got precise control over the hydraulics. You move the quadrant lever down a fraction the linkage goes down a fraction. It gives you that precise control which you need when you're hitching on. Position control is also used when transporting linkage mounted implements. Without the top link on, when the implement digs into the ground, the headstock actually pivots forwards towards the back of the tractor and that will push on the top link and that's how the draft control is actually operating. So if we come back to the Dexter again, there's our top link attachment pin on the bracket and it pivots on the rear axle casing and the forces acting on that top link bracket are transmitted to the main draft control spring and that in turn is connected to the control valve through internal linkage. So pushing on the top link bracket there is actually going to operate the draft control. Let's see if we can see that in, in actual operation. Right, well we've got draft control selected, uh, the engine's running and what I'm going to do is with a crowbar I'm just going to push in on the top link. If I push in on the top link bracket, compress the main draft control spring, we get the arms to go up. Well, the lift cylinder has been removed from the top cover, and here it is. So we're going to start the dismantling process. First thing I'm going to do is to actually remove the front plate. And in this case, it's held on by... Uh, to set screws or set bolts and there's a spring behind here so I'm just keeping it in check with the fingers so that nothing pings out and so out comes the the plate and inside there is our spring that's a spring which is actually pushing on the control valve and we're going to remove the old o-ring which is a little bit easier said than done we've actually freed it off by using a, a scriber a pointed scriber but being very careful not to actually damage the actual uh, unloading valve itself and not to actually stab our fingers uh, once it's free we can then try and peel the o-ring the old o-ring off. Okay, so that's the old o-ring, which we're going to put down there for a second, out of the way. And we're going to use a little bit of oil on here, just to lubricate matters. And we're going to fit the unloading valve into its bore. without an o-ring on and what we want to do is we just want to ascertain that it's fitting in there okay and it's not actually binding at all I want this quadrant lever to stay where I actually put it and so the workshop manual says adjust it until you get a pull of four to five pounds force before the lever will actually move. So I'm using a spring balance and it's actually moving at about two pounds. So it's obviously too slack 
so I'm going to just tighten this nut up here a little bit put a bit more tension on it and we'll try again to so about two and a half now okay. now with everything set as so we should find that the distance between the machine faced on the lift cylinder and the machine land on the control valve is actually 0.396 of an inch. So I've set my trusty vernier caliper to 0.396 of an inch and remember this is actually for the, for the Dexter and um, no, it's, it's a fair bit out. So I'm now just going to slacken off the lock nut on the turnbuckle and uh, then I'm going to adjust the turnbuckle to give us that, that dimension. <laughs> 